Hello and welcome back to some more Art Time Creative Being with me, Ellie Atchison El Mastri. Uh, welcome, if it's the first time you've joined us today, to uh, spend some time looking at ways to re release your creative inner self. Um, I'm talking today about getting going with some of those watercolour techniques I mentioned before. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to get set up with some papers and paints and brushes and so on. So we're going to try today to uh, I'm going to show you some basic techniques, some simple techniques for working with the paint and we're going to apply these straight away to doing something simple that I actually got around me today and maybe some of you have also got it yourself but if not you can apply these techniques very quickly uh, and get some nice effects in the way that you're working. So um, I'm going to start today by um, working with a graduated wash. A graduated wash is um, as, as it sort of describes it really, it's a wash of colour that spreads out across the paper but then it gradually changes its colour or it changes its tone down the paper. So I'm going to start off by using um, some blues today and actually I'm going to kind of create a little skyscape as we're going along to see how these techniques actually can apply to something real that you could paint rather than just show you a little dry techniques, okay? So we'll try it straight off and I'm going to work today with my view out of the window but I'm lucky enough to have a, a lovely view of some sky and clouds today which is why the light it keeps changing quite dramatically in here it's a very windy bright day uh, and I've had a few problems getting the lighting set up in here because it keeps going really dark with grey clouds and then it brightens up and I get the sunshine in again so I'm going to work today with some blues that I see in the sky now if you step outside and have a look at your sky even in the night sky and very particularly you'll see this sunset and sunrise, is when you look straight up you will see that actually if it's a blue sky then it's one kind of blue at the top of the sky and as you kind of look down towards the horizon or the tree level or buildings level you'll see it changes colour slightly. Now it may be that it becomes a sort of more yellowy blue or at sunset it's obviously got different colours at that point um, but even just on a regular blue sky day, we're lucky enough to have one today, then when I look up it's quite a strong rich cobalt blue looking straight up and as I come down and look towards the horizon it changes into a more um, a sort of a, a paler blue and I'm going to use one called cerulean blue um, and I'm starting off with a kind of a flat brush a flat wash brush today and on my paper which is the 300 gram paper I talked about before watercolor paper Quite a thick one, if you'd have missed the last video don't worry about it. And I'm just going to start painting, loading that brush with a lot of paint there and I'm just going to gradually paint across the surface. Load my brush again, overlap slightly, paint right across, overlap again. Okay, and add some water then I'll mix in some of the other paint. Clean, clean water, 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 water with this. And I'm going to mix those two together. I haven't given myself enough of that paint, where is it? Um, this is one of the reasons why the plates are so good, because you can get these big pools of colour um, and you're not restricted by a small palette area and you can really see what colour you're getting. So now I'm gradually mixing that together and the next, the next line is going to be a bit of that. Okay, so that's I'm gradually going to work a bit more of the other blue into it. Now it's such a subtle change with these blues that it's not going to read as a dramatic difference for you viewing this but you can experiment with any kinds of colours doing this. I'm gradually going to add in you know some water, just water there and fade it down a bit. Very simple, doesn't really look like anything yet. Um, as I get down here, do you know what I'm just going to do? I'm just going to show you another effect that happens when your brush starts to get a little bit dry and this is really cool when you're working with things like the sea or where the sun hits an area on the land and creates areas of highlights rather than using white the purest style of painting with the watercolours is just to use the paper as I mentioned before in the previous video and here what starts to happen is I'm going to work with that it's just going to get, start to get a bit dry there and what happens is you start to see the paper showing through it's like a sort of scumbling technique in a way, which is a, a, a word we apply with other kinds of colours, when the other kinds of paints rather, when the brushes start to get a little bit dry of the paint um, and you can't kind of spread the paint across it, but actually 
it starts to look a little bit like water reflecting off a sea surface. So I'll show you a seascape in another, actually do a seascape for you. Bring the camera down to the sea maybe. We might do a bit of that. Could get a bit of wind noise, but um, so there you've got the graduated wash there. And you know, if I was painting that in the, at a different time of day, then it might be according to the colors that I see, I'll maybe add in some yellows there, add in some pinky peachy colors to, to get that change, that very, very subtle change. And that forms a good background for if you're doing a landscape and you want to do it in a fairly sort of starting off with a fairly kind of classical idea of it and you want to get that sky in the background to whatever else is going to go in front of it so that is still wet now since we're looking at the sky and I've got all these lovely clouds outside um, a very simple technique to begin to um, create some other white shapes is to use something like paper or I've got here an actual sponge it's a bit gungy but it actually is a new one um, <laughs> out of the sea it wasn't new for the sponge I'm going to crumple that up and then I'm just going to, I see that paper's bent up now, I'm just going to put my nail down there, fingernail like that, and I'm actually going to um, dab off some areas here with the tissue. Now clouds are moving really fast so it's not as if each time I look out the window this, they've changed slightly anyway so I'm not going to worry too much about any kind of you know, and you're always capturing a moment when you're doing something like this. You're not, it's not like painting a building, but actually, you know, that's where watercolour painting is kind of at its best, I feel, in a way, that you can capture these things really, really quickly and nicely. Um, and I'm just dabbing that off using a fresh piece of tissue. I'm not rubbing it in, but if the cloud, these clouds are nice kind of cumulus rain clouds, but actually if I just want to do like a, there's some other sort of cloud up there, I could just do that just do a sort of a streak through the sky like like that okay so that's a way of getting a white area coming through you're just basically you're it's painting but you're kind of removing the paint is what you're doing really you're just you're just removing it um so I might just press quite hard on that okay so you begin to see that coming through now a bit of magic i stumbled upon when i was in my early days doing student um, before i went to art school actually was using brown in the sky it's not a color we might leap to use but when you're looking at these gray clouds when you start to get really sensitive to the colors of things as you increase your looking skills the grays that we see in those color clouds are best formed by using something like a brown with blue mixing them together it might surprise you a little bit but we're going to try that out now I'm going to use a fairly sort of large-ish brush um, I've got here some, some using round brushes. Oh, that one's a bit. That's the one that's done up with tape. It's a bit wobbly. Needs new tape. <laughs> I like my brushes to last. So this brown is a burnt umber, which is a sort of a dark brown. You get really specific when you're an artist, right? You can say there's lots of different kinds of browns. I can give you ten words for brown. And I'm going to mix that with some of that cobalt now. I'm going to keep it fairly watery to start off with and what I'm looking to achieve here is a kind of grey mixed with brown and blue okay and what is a very rainy cloud so I'm gonna there we go that's coming that's coming there I'm gonna add that in now and I'm gonna add that on top now another technique that we use in the watercolour painting I'm gonna lighten that down a bit is called wet in wet and wet in wet is when you paint what you paint on top of a surface that is already wet it may be wet with water or it may be wet with the paint now where this is wet it's going to spread out slightly and there I'm just going to add in some little there's some sort of free floating grayish forms of clouds I'm going to put those in the wet area and they will just actually kind of begin to coalesce slightly with the wet area that is called wet in wet as a technique and when you're working on this heavier paper this 140 pound weight paper um, you can get these really beautiful effects painting wet in wet so um, I'm going to make a series of different videos I was wondering how to do this best just I want to just make it dry techniques I want to, it's more fun just to apply it directly I think to something straight away and I'm gonna just soften that a bit and then we've got some 
other areas. I'm going to change the brown up slightly. So areas that are actually beginning to look a little bit more browny. The amazing thing about doing these kinds of um, little samples or studies, observational studies, is you begin, the more you look, the more you're able to see, in a way, in terms of your visual acuity with colour and shape. And you gain, you gain a greater sensitivity, in a way, because you're sort of really trying to see. And then, because you're really trying to see, you actually see more you see more so now I'm going to soften the top of that with some water as it dries off it will dip in tonal value a little bit that means to say it'll go it'll, it'll fade <laughs> <laughs> it'll fade a little bit and that's just experience you know judging being able to judge how something will fade but I think with anything with watercolor paper you want, with a watercolor painting you want to feel confident to be bold and just try it out you know just try it out and see what happens so there's always going to be another sky hopefully you know <laughs> so you can you can do another one or you can do a series of these um, and experiment and explore a little bit now I'm going to use, nothing I'm going to use is like a brush that's already wet but hasn't got any paint on it and I'm going to run that along the bottom. This cloud does not actually have a, a flat bottom but I'm going to <laughs> just do that. And it's quite nice sometimes just to use that tissue paper to dry that off. To use a brush that's wet but doesn't have any paint on it to also begin to lift some paint off. Because actually up there I've got a bit of a puddle of paint. I don't really want that much on it. It's puddled into a corner, so I'm going to lift it off by using a wet brush. And then actually I might refine the edges of that a little bit and become a bit more sensitive to it. And the wonderful thing about doing this in a climate that is as humid as we are in Northern Europe, in North America, um, with humid climates, is the paint will stay damp on the paper for a long time. <laughs> Oh, so funny. The first time I took these, I took watercolour paints to the Middle East and I got them out and as soon as I put them on the paper, it was really hot. They just dried instantly and I had all these like hard edges on my paintings and it just didn't work. It didn't work really as a, as a painting media out in that climate. So it's very suited to things that are watery, you know, watery in nature. Okay, so we're beginning to build up some, some forms there, some other shapes and I'm going to mix that in there. And even among all those greys that I see in the sky, greys and browns, I see, you know, I see varieties of them and differences of, of shape, differences of tone as well. And now where the paint is slightly dry, that's the other technique beginning to come in now where you're painting wet on top of dry. You're painting, so you're layering, actually. You're layering the paint on top of what is already dried. So that begins to be... Uh, when you can work into the detail and when you don't want the paint to blend in with what it's lying on top of. So in another painting I might take this on into a fuller landscape and show you trees and show you how to do other things like that on the top of the surface um, when that one is dry. Um, so there we've got a few beginning techniques, some graduated wash, some wet in wet, lifting the paint off using either tissue or I didn't use the sponge but you could just use it with the sponge like um, like in that area now, that's a little bit wet there. I could just soften those edges with that. Um, so lifting the paint off, scumbling a little bit when the paint goes dry at the bottom, creating those highlighted areas. And then at the end, when that painting is starting to dry out, painting some layers, layering on top, using wet paint on top of the dry surface. So have a go, explore, have some fun with that. That's a simple skyscape. And as I say, this technique can apply to whole wide range of things so we'll be in some of the other videos we'll be trying some of those things out please let me know what you think of this do give me some feedback share it if you like it please um, you can direct message me i'm ellie atchison Masri on instagram or leave your comments below thank you so much for watching